Hello and welcome to Women in Mobility, a series where women leaders, entrepreneurs, and professionals talk about their leadership journey and get insights for future women leaders on how they excel in their professions. It's my pleasure today to invite Ms. Majula Karale, who is the Deputy Director Technology Group at Automotive Research Association, ARAI, to share her inspiring story. As her work continues to impact the past, present, and the future of the Indian automotive industry. She started in the same organization as a research assistant. And from the last 27 years, she has been part of different advanced technologies, teams contributing to innovation in electrification, hybridization, safety, critical integrated system, OBD, autonomous, IoT, and much more. Welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you so much, Panchu. So, uh, first of all, I would like to understand, you know, since uh, it's a three decade uh, journey in the profession journey, you know, and, you know, what kind of leadership mantra you have been following, and, you know, what is the one piece of advice that you would like to give to the young women professionals? Okay, so as a leader, uh, I, what I really feel as a leader is uh, uh, the main job of a leader is to create leaders uh, first. Second, uh, in today's world, two Vs are important, like having a vision and having a value. And uh, if you have to have a vision and a value, you have to also wear your attitude. Like uh, uh, you have to uh, have a very strong communication skills, uh, right. both in words as well as in action. Uh, right. So this is very important uh, as a leader uh, to have that. Uh, then... Uh, when it comes to a team from a leadership, it becomes is giving freedom to the team, which is very important. And still right. bound it or bound them with a common goal and objective. Uh, right. So people should have a freedom to do, but uh, they all should be working towards a common goal or a common objective. It's very, very important. Uh, the next thing, what I feel as a leader, uh, probably my my way of working is together we can. Like right. it's, uh, it's very difficult uh, like if you want to alone, uh, you can walk fast. <laughs> uh, I don't want to say that uh, as well. So uh, it is uh, together we can. So it is practically right. to achieve a goal. Uh, we have to work on the strengths of each other. Right. And at the right time, you have to give the pass to the right teammate so that we achieve that final goal. So uh, this is what my style of working uh, when it comes to a leadership. Yeah. So my next question to you is, you know, can you take us through your leadership journey, you know, and when do you think of having your, you know, how do you work independently and what kind of things you do in a day-to-day -day basis, you know, where it can impact lives, you know? So just uh, some anecdotes, some incidences you want to share. Okay. Uh, if it comes to incidences, I think uh, the latest and the ultimate, what I believe, uh, the team that I need to it, which is a uh, oil technology group. It's a dedicated R&D and innovation team. Uh, which has come from the different uh, multi-domain, like, like today's experience, uh, today's technology or today's solutions are no more a single technology solution or single domain solutions. They require multi-domain approach. Uh, they are multi-entrant problems and problem segments and challenges which are there. So uh, ARA has been doing R&D and has, I'm very happy, happy to be part of the organization, uh, which in name by itself says research and development. And, uh, has been working very strongly on research and uh, development over the past five decades, I believe. Right. And uh, with those uh, uh, R&D flavor by itself also, uh, still ability to create a different group with the need of an hour where there could be a need of a multi-domain, multi different multi people, uh, getting them to, uh, together and uh, leaving the story of a typical leadership is uh, right. forming, norming, and then performing to uh, deliver. So uh, last four, four and a half years, uh, the team has been working together mm -hmm. uh, and we are able to, uh, uh, so ARA has been doing R&D, we are doing now something in the emerging technologies which are ahead of our time. And now in four and four and a half years, we have some technologies which, uh, which, which are ready to go to market, which have been now deployed, are getting deployed right. in the market. We have right. some couple of technology transfer happening in the new and common, uh, uh, upcoming emerging areas. So right. this is something which I feel is a uh, kind of a success story. I believe that wherein 
getting different people on board and ability to uh, to look mm -hmm. forward uh, ability to get those people sing to these uh, different concepts and ability to deliver this is recently that i could see uh, i could also see uh, what i personally like is as, as as i said earlier i believe in together we can so i were i believe in collaborations and uh, then ability to get the collaborations which are non conventional or unconventional collaborations uh, in place uh, i think couple of collaborations recently what i would uh, like to just think about is probably isro ar ai working together like right. like how can people think about like how isro and ar ai can work together uh, for something right. else right. ability to lead that uh, yes. and get them on board and not only one like we work on at least couple of uh, their technologies to get go to the uh, application level go to the development demonstration level uh, is very important the second could be the our collaboration with ncl actually ncl is just across our uh, the other side of the hill of uh, right. pune uh, right. but uh, over the years we have never worked together because we mm. we always felt that our applications are different uh, right. and part of it but uh, with the current changes and paths we always felt that could be very important uh, right. also now recently we have uh, Uh, sign mou or soi sorry you know, i should not say mou it is a uh, soi with uh, niti ayog for ai ai in so vital innovation so okay. we are trying okay. to get uh, if we are doing innovation try to get a people who can contribute and work towards it right. get the collaborations is something which uh, and different collaboration not a conventional collaboration right. is very important and that's what i can try i believe that's another uh, leadership success story i believe uh, in this now coming into my earlier days i think i i i personally think leader leadership is a quality and some has to exercise from the beginning it is not like that that leader becomes after so many years mm -hmm. has so much of experience uh, right. there is leadership uh, when you are doing small task so leadership is ability to uh, work like get people together right. work towards common domain or common goal right. Right. But I think uh, I've been again uh, very lucky where I have been given very uh, the projects which are uh, now we are talking about uh, the uncertainties. But that time when we say research projects, different projects where we were not sure whether it will work on. So right. uh, ability to work on such projects, uh, ability to succeed or uh, work with a team as even as a team member that is also leadership, and right. ability to. quickly succeed or su quickly fail i think uh, in r and d we can't say that all the projects are successful we have to have uh, success and a balance of like always a up and down of success and yeah. failures yeah. Uh, and everywhere there will be learnings uh, yeah. whether you are successful or failures yeah. can you recall any advice piece of advice which was given to you when you were starting your career as a woman and that to in automotive industry and in the research and development field You know, where a lot of engineers are there. You know, and that time, you know, when you started, you know, there were a lot of uh, engineering was usually or a male dominated uh, kind of domain. Uh, how how did you manage? What kind of advices you got? So could you just so you know a few words on that? Uh, of course, on advices I'll come, but I'll say that I'm I've been very lucky actually. Again, I'm saying uh, okay. when I started my career. Uh, my mentor my guru my boss was a lady so okay. uh, <laughs> that's very surprising and very nice yeah she 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 has been technology leader that time and she continues to be now also i always uh, feel very inspiring when i looked up to her and right. i think my guru she has been my um, uh, a real guru mentor and probably a godmother for kind of a thing and right. that's where i said I'll, i'm very lucky uh, but still uh, i did not continue con very long time to work with her when, uh, but of course the initial work uh, i have been working with her and i have developed myself under her uh, mm -hmm. so people nowadays also still say that you have influence of her to know both of us uh, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, when it comes to i think what i have learned uh, when it is come it comes to r and d is uh, ability to uh, learn new things um and ability to unlearn new uh, old things right. so i think this is very important learnability right. uh, this is what has been uh, really taught to me and i have been experience experiencing exper experimenting right. and uh, trying to 
or tell people also, which is very, very important. Because things would change. Uh, the core values still remain the same, but the things and applications would change, and which is very important to learn and unlearn things. Mm -hmm. uh, when I normally used to uh, work directly onto the vehicle, under the vehicle, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it, it was very in interesting actually uh, in early days where uh, we used to make our hands mm -hmm. pluck and then work on the actual field. Uh, yeah. And I, I'm really very happy that uh, I have been in an institute or the organization, whereas there has been a, a gender neutrality. Okay. Uh, so when it comes to opportunity, it has been given to both equally. Uh, it has never been uh, said that you are though you won't be able to do that or uh, it is not for you something like that. so i think uh, this is where i'm very I, I will i feel that i'm very uh, lucky on this point you're able to recall any piece of advice given to you by your you know mentor in the initial starting years of your career uh, i have been given advice by many people now also people give that so what are those advices in this <laughs> or learnings of the other woman? I think the uh, first advice uh, which was uh, given to me probably is try to control your emotions. Don't show up. <laughs> uh, right. I think uh, being a lady, typically there are feminine characteristics. Yeah. Yeah. Are normally, I don't want to say a man or woman, but they have feminine characteristics that right. share a lot, you open up a lot, we express a lot. Right. <laughs> and uh, Okay. Which is good uh, many times, particularly when it comes to a good and bad stress conditions and other conditions mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. uh, but you should be uh, uh, enough balance uh, that you should people should not uh, get a wrong advantage of it. Uh, right. I think uh, that is the first advice or first learning I got uh, mm -hmm. when I started it, and which is very important for anyone for that matter. Right. Uh, right. Over time, I've been told that uh, uh, passion is important, uh, but uh, don't go away with the passion alone. Uh, you should know where to stop. Right, right. I think uh, this is again a very important piece of advice uh, mm -hmm. uh, that I have got, and I'm very thankful for people who have taught me this. Uh, okay. The third advice I, which I feel I, I remembered and try to practice uh, is uh, always, uh, of course, it being a woman, uh, you are always uh, empathetic. Or again, I will not say women, feminine characteristic. Uh, but uh, don't react. Like don't react to any uh, any ways positive or negative. Right. You have right. to have a response. Don't uh, uh, don't accept as uh, like uh, anything is coming on your way that right. is, uh, but don't react. Mm -hmm. uh, don't react in terms of uh, so that you hurt people. Mm -hmm. uh, always respect that. Mm -hmm. Reactions many times happen that you just yeah. burst out and yeah. uh, doesn't give a right response. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it is better way to uh, respond than react and. Uh, this is what I try to practice maximum. I don't want to say that I have still mastered it, but uh, this is a very, very important piece of advice. And I have been trying to follow this. Uh, on the way. Okay. So, uh, you know, you have learned so much in past three decades. You have been experiencing every now and then about, you know, women leadership, you know, tackling with different kinds of scenarios, concepts. Uh, how, what kind of learnings do you want to pass on to future women leaders and how do you nurture them in your own organization? So I'm very happy again that I'm working with a very young, uh, enthusiastic team. I think uh, right. young means with enthusiasm, uh, right. with uh, less fear, mm -hmm. uh, ability to work in this VUCA world and lead them in this VUCA world is... Right. Is, is a real uh, key challenge as well as uh, uh, most difficult task for me, uh, I believe, and which is very important. Uh, so having a young team helps me into ability to take uh, challenges. They are very enthusiastic. Uh, they are right. ready to take up challenges. Uh, so right. this is very important. But at the same time, many times people like to work in a very certain environment, mm -hmm. uh, like I have to go from a position A to position B or point A to point B. Uh, 
mm-hmm. and uh, most of our projects uh, or most of our technologies applications are quite uncertain in part of it so uh, ability to guide them to break it down to small pieces i think it is very important uh, mm-hmm. ability to uh, build their or enhance their creativity and apply them so uh, mm-hmm. use the principles of design thinking nowadays right. uh, trees methods uh, so which are very again i'm trying to take more technical but getting out a creativity best out of them is uh, and leading them in a book world is real challenge and this is what uh, uh, probably what i have learned in 30 years these people have to learn in 5 years 7 years uh, they should be ready to uh, they should be ready to change their careers in like yeah. I, i personally don't think this young generation will be able to have a single expertise single domain throughout their careers uh, and mm-hmm. which is again a challenging so mm-hmm. which i started ability to unlearn or de learn self and right. ability to learn something new right. take on this new challenges this vuka is something which i have to address all the way right. Right. still keep their moral up all the time some days will come we will have success some days will come we will have not so much of success mm-hmm. but uh, ability to sell through that uh, try to have a more open environment rather than having a very vertical uh, structure i personally don't like that and particularly with the innovations and uh, uh, research you have to respect horizontally each other subject expertise uh, inputs uh, ideas and uh, grow them in very non conventional and unconventional methodic uh, patterns so right, right. which is very important i think everybody should practice and follow that so that you will be able to move and deliver right uh, sometime to go when to go horizontal and creative mode and when to go in the action mode right. so both are important only cre- uh, having ideas doesn't really help right it's really not uh, you, ha- you should be able right. to implement them so a path where ideas can be implemented actually be seen and move further so uh, so ability to do horizontal versus vertical right. very nicely is- put yeah so uh, you have been working with different organization automotive industry it's very diverse you know from components to car makers uh, you know there is some some level of glamour some level of scientific r and d everything is there you know in our industry uh but what do you think you know uh, what is lacking in the organizations that today prevents women from reaching top leadership roles okay uh, i think for a for any person for that but but for women what is important is creating um at supportive ecosystem which is very important like uh, you can say it is work life balance or whatever it is but creating right. that uh, entire ecosystem around you is very very important uh, for uh, a lady for a woman so that uh, she will be able to at, be at peace when she's in office uh, so she can work uh, with a comfort as well as when she is at home she knows there are people who are uh, there who are going to support her uh, when she needs uh, it some time for the home also um, okay. i'm creating that uh, uh, support system is very important on the personal level also at the organization level right. so personally i might be able to or any woman how to really do it so that she will be able to work first like right everybody can have a uh, some break because of the personal commitments that she has. but she should have that just a uh, really ecosystem built around her that she should be able to move out step out go to office should be uh, able to contribute uh, even she is working as a person entrepreneur she should be able to focus on her work uh, so ability to uh, focus on work will only come when you are at peace and at a back end and that will come with the ecosystem and that ecosystem on a personal basis could be with parents could be with husband could be with uh, uh, other family members as you grow up also with your kids uh, so they can then support you and uh, right. that is and maybe the uh, probably other maids who will be supporting you ability to deliver that work uh, like sharing the quality time with the family which is needed right yeah. and in the organization i think um, accepting the views um, accepting their needs i think mm-hmm. uh, one of uh, very great example of my 
colleague who works with me uh, in my team. Mm -hmm. uh, she is a proud mother of three kids, uh, oh. one and then a twin. <laughs> and uh, I'm very happy. She's very like one of the top performance in the team. She always contributes, oh. likes to do that. And now she's doing her PhD. Uh, <laughs> With small kids at home, so very strong and good uh, ecosystem at home, as well as I think the organization has supported her well, uh, okay. and which is needed, right? Uh, right. And every time it doesn't happen, and if it doesn't happen, uh, people come out like people uh, try to, or the ladies try to have the escape route or try to choose only one, and right. that's where the growth uh, stops at multiple levels. Right. Right. Uh, and at organization level, ability to take uh, a different views uh, of mm -hmm. uh, uh, mixed culture, like uh, not only uh, women as such, but also uh, culturally different people, which is very important. Because uh, uh, they, they, they give different perspective to each subject. So the things can be same, but it can be looked at different angles and different perspectives. So any conscious decisions uh, and way forward uh, could be or the challenges can be solved if that perspective is there. Mm -hmm. So creating such uh, environment and ambience where everybody can contribute the best way and create an ecosystem around them uh, will be able to grow women in job because they have the potential. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody has the like, potential doesn't really uh, work with a man versus woman at all. So both right. have small potentials. Okay. So coming back to a very basic question, you know, about work-life balance, you know, uh, you have been there in very many conferences, you have day-to-day -day meetings, you know, so how do you manage, how do you strike that balance between work and home? Uh, I think, any I tips think I just answered share? that. Creating <laughs> 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 right. No, on the personal level, if you can share yeah, something. Yeah, it's a great, right, creating right, supposed thing. I'm very, very thankful to my family, like, um, caring, her, caring husband, support you, uh, my in-laws, uh, she take, like my daughter was very young, she used to take care of her completely. I don't have to really be bothered about that. So I think uh, my family has been my backbone. I think what I am today is with my family uh, okay. at a back end, uh, the performance is with them uh, on a personal mm -hmm. level. And which is very important that creating that system which will help you to move further. Anything you do to take care of your family in terms of you know, creating more time from your uh, work schedule, busy work schedule, uh, you know, coming back to home. How, if you can give some instances, would be really nice. Well, um, I'll tell one exa uh, one example. Actually, uh, I was in Japan. Uh, I normally keep my phone, uh, whatever it may charge uh, the number on when my daughter was young enough. And she was in a school, and uh, from the school, uh, the number registered was, was mine. And I got a call uh, in Japan that she's having a fever and she needs to be picked up. Uh, okay. And uh, there was no way, like, I had to stop in my meeting. I, uh, I went out, uh, talked to my mm -hmm. husband. He was away from home around 40 kilometers. Mm -hmm. And then I had to talk to my uh, friend and my mother in law, both. So my mm -hmm. friend, along with my mother-in-law, then drove, picked her up back, took to doctor. Okay. I talked to doctor and then mm -hmm. had her. But I always feel this is what they have been contributing. And in turn, what I really need is uh, the reciprocal uh, care. Uh, mm -hmm. When they need uh, me, I am there, uh, kind of thing, which is very important. It could be in their decisions. Uh, when they uh, need to take some decisions, uh, we are there to back, you, uh, back them up. Uh, it's, it could be my husband when he's taking his business decisions. It could be my parents uh, when they need support. Uh, and it's my daughter uh, who, 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 who needs my time probably and giving that quality time to her uh, is very, very important. So in turn, it's, it's always reciprocating any relationship you take in a personal or professional part. Uh, last question, you know, what is your vision for the future of mobility? That's technical. So I'm more comfortable <laughs> with this department. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, if I talk from uh, a look from top, uh, I think uh, carbon zero okay. and uh, vision zero. Uh, 
or okay. what I say, carbon neutrality, yeah. kind of a thing, as well as vision zero is zero accident. Right. Uh, this is very from top uh, final. Mm. Uh, not to drive this, uh, uh, we should have the, if I now focus to India, which is our core part of it is, uh, our Indian scenarios, Indian use cases would be different. And uh, hence it is important to have uh, Indian mobility case uh, right defined. And currently this Indian mobility case, like you globally talk about case uh, is connected, automated, share electrified the way. Right. Uh, I believe this case uh, for India today uh, is uh, connected and shared uh, together to address the road traffic jam uh, parts of the mm -hmm. affordable and accessible. Right. So finally it is Mobility is society like a society at large. Uh, mm -hmm. Interesting statistics we do know that is only thirty three percent mobility in India is mm -hmm. motorized. Very interesting to the study. So so accessible to them and affordable to them, which is very important. So this is what uh, age stands. Mm -hmm. Age is I think safety. I personally strongly believe that safety is a key concern today and to address very strongly. Uh, right. We do have one point five lakhs accidents. Uh, two years back annually, which is very high, and I think it's uh, in such a high number. Uh, and having generating that sensitivity, sensitivity amongst people and creating solutions to address this is very important. And the last E is um, uh, environment friendly, so driving sustainability and uh, towards uh, energy independence, so, which is very important today. Our import views are directly open. Uh, if we are changing anything to some other mobility, we should not shift our focus of import. Uh, so driving energy independence is very important. So something which can be generated here and uh, delivered here. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we are doing this, uh, I believe technologies will be global. Like They are global, but the solutions have to be local. We have to really work on a local solution for the local problems. So very different use cases, the way people are driving, vehicles, which is very important. Uh, is need, need enough aware that uh, we create our solutions here locally. Right. So not dependent outside. And uh, all my current, ass current assignments, you could see at the back, Technoverse is uh, something which we are talking about. And, uh, I think uh, if at every stage, if we can think over it and try to drive it, deliver it, uh, uh, and really have faith in people uh, who can contribute this young generation, create right. innovations, create solutions. Right. I think uh, we will definitely drive towards that. That's what, that's what I look at a mobility solutions today uh, for India for the future. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining in. Thank you, so. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.